Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the From Busy to Rich podcast. Uh, This podcast exists to inspire advisors like you to increase your profitability and also the quality of life, but not just for you, for those that you serve. I am joined, as always, by our friend, Wes Young. Hello, Wes. How are you today? I am fantastic, Andy. And we're also joined by Justin. Justin is going to be chiming in more than usual today, which I'm excited about. Uh, We're going to talk. We're going to talk about um, culture. We're going to talk about hiring. We're going to talk about recruiting. We're going to talk about the growth of your team. Wes, can we start with this premise, which is that no one reaches their potential, their true potential alone by themselves. It, it If you want to truly maximize your gifts, uh, what you could become in life, you need other people in your business to come alongside and take away things from you that are not your greatest strength and leave you doing the things that you're best at. Is that a fair assumption for us to work from? Absolutely. Okay. So given that, why don't you present the idea today that's a little deeper than that, more nuanced? Yeah. So bear with me because I, I want to read this because it was it's not long, but it, it is so impactful. Uh, and again, if you if you guys aren't reading Seth Godin's blog that he has, uh, it's just a treasure trove of really thoughtful ideas and data. So I came across this one as we were preparing for for this and I was researching. Uh, he wrote a blog and it's called The Difference Between Hiring and Recruiting. And it says this, Bob wonders if there's a difference. I'm pretty sure there is. Hiring is what you do when you let the world know you're accepting applications from people looking for a job. Recruiting is the act of finding the very best person for a job and persuading them to stop doing what they're doing and come join you. Hiring is easy and fast and is basically a retail operation. Recruiting is artful and slow and is essentially a direct marketing effort. Recruiting raises the bar because it demands you have a job worth quitting for. The recruiter doesn't solve an urgent problem for the person being recruited. In fact, they create one. The person already has a job, hence no problem. The problem being created is that until they change over to your job, they're unhappy. That's a huge hurdle for a job to overcome, which leads to this key question. Is your job opening so good you could recruit great people for it? If not, perhaps you need to work on that. So let's um, let's dive into that. Um, the idea that, and I think this is a fundamental difference, is that when they say hiring is basically a retail operation and that it can be done fast versus recruiting is slow, I think there's a shift here that if you want the right people, um, unless you're to the point where people are really clamoring to come work Oh, actually, even when they're clamoring to come work with you, that by definition, it should be a slow process. What does that mean on a what? What does that mean, or what does that change for people as they're looking to grow their teams? How how does that change how they they view what we're talking about? Yeah, I fundamentally think it goes back to this: is that when when you're hiring, what are most people doing, Andy? They're they're I need I need somebody in here because there's more stuff to do than I can get to hopefully they realize that they are not good at everything and they need people in there to continue to buy back their own time. Another great book we'll talk about later, buy back your time. Um, But when you do it, here's what I don't think gets thought about a lot is what story are you inviting those people into? Are are you, is it um, come work for me? I'll pay you because guess what? Everybody else has that in their storyline already. That's like a non-negotiable for people coming to work for you. So, so the recruiter going to somebody who's great at what they do, they already have a great job and saying, Hey, if you switch this job and go to this job, they'll pay you. And it is not a very compelling, like attractive thing for people to make a, 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 a switch, particularly for people who are really good. However, if you've got a great answer to a question that, um, people are secretly asking, they don't even know they're always asking is, is I've got an exciting story that we are living here. And we, we need wonderful people to be a part of it. Um, all of a sudden, it, it changes the dynamic of instead of asking people to work for you, people are asking if they can work for you. And it's, it's, it's a switch because they observe what you're doing. What you're cooking smells so good and it's so attractive. They're like, can I come in and eat what you guys are cooking? Because it looks so powerful and so good. Instead of, hey, 
come on in here, help us cook. You're going to love it. I promise. Um, but you can't, you can't smell it. Justin, let me ask, um, about your experience. Um, remind folks how long you've been in the business and how you view this, um, as, as you found a place to land with Wes. Yeah, I think a couple of things come to mind. I've been in the business for about 10 years and, and this concept I see play out, not just from the staff positioning and the team members and, and what you're, you're building, but also on the client side, you know, it's, it's kind of like dating. Are, are you currently the type of person that the type of person you want to date wants to be with? If not, you probably need to make some changes, right? Like if, if you're running around, but you want somebody that's faithful, you probably need to, to change, make some changes. Matter of fact, my wife, when we met, she was dating somebody else. So apparently what I was putting out in the story that I was living was a, a, a encouraging enough one that, that she was willing to leave her previous situation and, and, and start dating me. Um, and fast forward, we've been married for almost 13 years. So the, the thing there is, again, if I were going to boil it down to is, are you now or are you becoming, going back to story, what the people that you want to work with are looking for? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, if you're just like every other advisor, as an example, and there's not much of a future there or a vision to be a part of an opportunity, then you're not really, you're not gaining anything. But if you're the Tom Brady of advisors, people want to come work with you, not just, not just other staff, but clients want to come work with you. Yeah, I love that analogy, uh, Justin, because I, I think we can so easily translate this over to the, the, the day in the life of an advisory group, um, the Tom Brady analogy. So you, people were willing to take less money up front to be a part of a Tom Brady team because, because you're not just, it's not just, Hey, if you come play for our team, we'll pay you. That is, that is one factor, right? And, and they should be paid well, right? I mean, we're not saying that, but, but. In addition to that, the story they were also entering into was, and will probably have a high likelihood of going to a Super Bowl. And, and, and we, we have this adventure we're going to pursue together. And by the way, if we go to the Super Bowl, you're going to make a whole lot more. Um, it, uh, being on a Tom Brady team that, that, that we start with paying you less. So versus there are some people out there that that's not their value proposition, which is fine because this should attract or repel is if they come in and go, no, I just want as much as I possibly can right up front. I don't care if we go to the Super Bowl or not. There's, those people embrace a different set of values. So the kind of people we're looking for, if you, if you create the narrative, if you invite them into a story that says, hey, look, here's, here's where we are. Is, you know, and then again, I think, I think the, one of the best examples of this is when we talk about what we do all the time, which we've said on this program many, many times, but is you know, we're meeting with a, a client for the first time. Well, it's the same thing as when you're meeting with an advisor that may ultimately want to be a part of what you're doing. Most of the people that are on our team, Andy, we didn't ask to be a part of the team. What they did is say, hey, are you looking for somebody to be a part of what you guys are doing? Because I like it and I'd like to participate in it. And then it's like, yeah. So we, they cared about the value of what we were, the adventure we were on first and the things we were doing. Now, again, you got to pay good people well and you need to have, part of that is like, hey, if we keep winning together, do we all win? Or, or is it just the, the, the you? Or is it the team yeah. that wins or a person on the team? So I think this is, this is, it is so much about where, where are you and where are you going? And for us first, what are the things you value about getting from where you are to where you want to go? And then when you're cooking that, the, the, the people that want to come aboard that train are going to seek you out as much as you, you know, you put a job post out, probably those people will notice it first. That's happened to us too. But, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I think it, it is, it is so, underutilized when it comes to both clients and when it comes to, to hiring. So what is true of J uh, Justin's situation? What is true of those who are joining your team? I want to encourage you who are listening or watching. There's no reason that you should be the exception to what we're talking about. You're, I would submit you're not the exception. And if you think you are, you're putting an excuse in front of you that's not there. It, it, it might be there, but you put it there. It's like people who get stuck on an escalator. There's no such thing. The escalator stops, you just keep walking, right? But there's many people who just put an excuse and say, man, it's just people want more money than ever. Yeah, they do, right? But they're either worth it or they're not. And there's lots of people who are worth it. People don't have very good work ethic. People, for the since people have been created, they have not had good work ethics, right? It's called the human condition. Does that mean everyone doesn't have good? No, 
What about millennials? Like, it's just all these excuses. But what about the fact that you know that there are great people out there and you can't control them, but you can control is yourself. You can control your day-to-day activity. You control the kind of people that are attracted to you. Um, and I know this to be true, that there are always going to be places that people want to work. There's always teams that people want to play for. And to change that culture, I'm thinking about this, we're recording at the time of NFL playoffs. There's teams that stunk three years ago and then they're in the championship game. Culture can change pretty quickly, especially if you are the primary person that dictates culture. Yeah. So I just want this to be an encouragement that if you feel like, gosh, I'm just trying to hire people and trying to hire people, then instead use different language. So Wes, what kind of language or what kind of thought process do you have when an opportunity, the business is growing, maybe think about your last two hires, what is your attitude towards adding people to your team at this point uh, of, of of where your business is at? Yeah. So I would tell you this, Any, we are always looking to add the right person to our team. And, and, and the right person is always starts with that they believe in the vision that we're carrying. And, and so for us, what that is, is our, our win organizationally is we uh, help people, uh, we, we inspire people to increase their profitability and their quality of life. Now, the way we do that is we have a process for that. Most of the people we work with are business owners, highly compensated corporate executives, and they fall into two categories. When we meet them, they've done a lot of planning, uh, a, a majority of them. They've got great advisors, a part of their team. The small majority have been real successful, just haven't done much at all as it relates to the work we do. But the one thing they all have in common, and this is like a fundamental life thing, they all have far more things they're trying to get accomplished than they have time to get mm. to everything. Yeah, And in their effort to do as much as they possibly can, there's always stuff that's left undone. Sometimes it's stuff they're aware of, and that's fun. But quite often, it's stuff they're not aware of that once they're made aware, they'd absolutely want to pursue it because it would increase their profitability and their quality of life. And that's where we come in. With our process, what we do is we start by asking a ton of questions, help them figure out where they are financially, uh, from a financial standpoint, about the future they want to create. And we wrap that in language. And what a rich life actually looks like. How, how do we align the use of their capital with what they really care about most? And capital being time, talent, energy, attention. Um, and, and then we can have some meaningful conversation when we understand those two things around those. So, so people in our business resonate with that. And when they see our process, they, they say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Um, clients that we work with have experienced it. They talk about it to their friends. We have a, you know, again, we, we teach Transform University where a big part of it, Andy, is where we, we, we have an annual engagement process that is so attractive that not only does it make it easy for people to want to come aboard, but they want to stay aboard once they are in right. an annual retainer relationship. And because they value not only just the transactional work that everybody does, which is the, you know, putting products in place and managing right. money, but also the transformational things that you do, which is helping them think and see and move more powerfully. It, and it reminds me, Wes, of, you know, you ask someone, why are you an Amazon member? And most people are, right? Yeah. But a lot of people are going to say, I like the free shipping. Other people are going to say, I like the selection. I like the prices. I like that I get movies. I like that I get discounts on this. I like that, you know, I like the Whole Foods. Connect. I mean, the point is there's lots of reasons for them to like that. Um, and so f- as a business owner, it sounds like when it comes to the planning process, you know, why why are you all part of the, you know, West Young and Associates family? It's, they're going to they're gonna maybe give five different answers, right? Yeah. The problem that most advisors have is when a client says, why do you work with so-and-so? Insert your name there if you're listening. They'll go, I mean, I, you know, I've been working. Got there first. Yeah. I've been with him for a long time. Uh, okay. So he was first. Yeah. What, that's, that's not a great sales point. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so give them more reasons uh, to be loyal. Right. Well, I think that's where the second part of this is like that. We, one of the things we teach is a, a process, an annual engagement process that's so attractive. It makes asking for referrals irrelevant because you get so many people coming to you. It is not a, a, a hiring process. It's a, they're asking you, can we hire you? And it, it is all lives in the annual engagement process that people, people that are attracted to what we do, do things like that. And their friends do things like that. And when, from an advisory perspective, when it's a, a team member that we want to bring in, we want them to understand this is what we do and why we think it matters. 
Uh, in fact, if you were in one of our team meetings, we would talk about that every week. We'd say, what is our win and why does that win matter? And, and what, what goes unsolved, what goes unseized if we're not out there doing, accomplishing our win organizationally. And if you don't have passion towards that, I don't care how much we're paying you, you're, you're not going to like this work. Um, and it's okay. There's plenty of other options for you, but if you want to be on a team and, and, and listen, we've got, you know, as we talk about on the show all the time, ma- massive vision of 10 X growth of where we want to go and how we're helping people. And so if that, if that makes you like shy away, good. That's okay. We 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 need a certain kind of person right. that wants right. to participate in where we're going, and that it just involves you know <laughs> regularly challenging our normal with new. Uh, you know, it involves you know having a a grateful attitude and a and an exciting vision that gives you the kind of fuel we want as we navigate our gap between where we want to be and where we want to go, and people that 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 attracts or repels, and so. That's that. That is what we're talking about here. Is it's more just you being clear. It doesn't have to be what we do. No, it's no, just- no. And I think that's good clarification. I was actually in Florida uh, recently, um, there to celebrate uh, a mentor of mine, his life, and and talk about his 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 life and celebrate with a bunch of people. And that he and his wife, when they moved there a few years ago, they live in what a lot of people live in Florida, a, a nice you know gated community. I had to check in with the guard at the front door and you know front gate and make sure that I was allowed there and. You drive and it's this curvy thing and there's, you know, there's flowers and there's animals and there's moss and it's just like this gorgeous environment, right? Yeah. And I go to park and I'm like, it's like Mercedes, Porsche, Lamborghini, da 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 da, da. And where some people would be like, I would hate to be around there. All those people, da da da, da. And other people are like, this is the only place I want to be around. <laughs> the point is, what attracts some people repels some people. Yeah. But... The challenge, I think, that maybe if you're listening to us right now, you have is if you if you have trouble with hiring, it's because you're asking, "Will you work for me? Will you work for me? Will you work for me?" So, what's the question that that people should be asking? Because they need to get help, Wes. They they need to scale, taking our advice. What is what is a, a more concise way versus saying, you know, will you please work for me? Yeah, I, I think it, it results back into saying. Hey, hey, here's where we are right now, organizationally. Here's where we're going to go as a team if things work the way we think it's possible. And and here's the role you could play in the organization that would really help us get there based on your unique skills and abilities and uh, and, and and wiring. And if that gets you excited, then we can talk about the other stuff that are just table stakes. Like we, yes, we're going to pay you. And and by the way. Here's an, here's another philosophy is certain roles attract people that, um, they, it's, it's upside is not as important to them that there's yeah, people absolutely. wired that way. It absolutely. is like, so what, you know, I'd rather just show up, do my work and leave. And there are roles that you need that. That's okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so be mindful of who, who, what are you hiring? What, what do you, what do you want? What, what team members need to do on the team? And what kind of values do they need to embrace? If they if they value upside, you want certain people in roles that help produce upside, right? Um, and and then there are other roles that it's just fine. You don't want to grow. You don't want you don't want to move past that. That's okay. Well, um, you know, and 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 they're perfectly fine with that. So understand, not everybody's like you. I think is <laughs> one, but but you do need to when you're thinking about the growth of the organization, um, you need to think about what story you're inviting this particular person into. And not not just the general story as, as like a whole. Be clear about it. Even the thing you can't be is lukewarm. You can't be like foggy, and it can't be a you uh, you come to work for me, I'll I'll pay you. It has to be hey, yes, you come to work for me, I'll pay you. Um, but here's where we are organizationally right now. Here's what we care about organizationally as a team. Here's where we're going, and here's how we do it. The role you can play is this. Because we need a person like this. And based on all the assessments we've been taking with you, you know, working genius and Colby's and uh, all, the, all the different things, we think you'd be great at this role if, if the values align. And so let's try it on together if, if you're excited about doing these things. So I, I think it's, it's clarity and it's, it, it, clarity involves what, what, what do you care about? What future are you trying to create and where you're coming from? What role? Uh, do you need in order to help you do more of what you do best and what you enjoy most and, and, and put somebody in a position that can do all those other things that they actually are uniquely wired to do better than you and they enjoy it. 
Yeah. And it sounds like that, again, that's a lot. And I would encourage you if you are in a place where you're looking to recruit slash hire that you listen to this episode again. But I also think that a lot that sounds like a lot, which makes it sound like it's going to go slow. But that's recruit recruiting is slower, right? It's slower than just hiring. Justin, I want to throw to you and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, I think for somebody, if you if you don't feel like you've got, you know, people coming in and uh, interest, whether it's on staff or or from a client standpoint, that really want to be a part of the story that you're telling then there's no harm and you should be willing to be humble to ask the type of people that you do want to work with, whether it's clients or staff, you know, what was something, what are the types of things that someone like you is looking for? Whether it's a client, what are you looking for in an advisor? Like if you, if you know somebody that owns a business, what is your advisor doing for you? Or what is it that you're looking for in an advisor and a financial planner? Awesome. And same thing That's with awesome. staff, like potential staff, what are you looking for? Somebody like you, it's a great performer. I want to build people like you into my organization Yeah, to attract people like you. What is that? Obviously there's a money piece, but beyond that, what does that look like? And then listen and take notes. It's free advice and opportunity to then go use. I think that a likelihood of someone answering that question, honestly, when you ask them that is very high because you're not actually asking them to switch. I mean, it's one thing to say, we switch, we switch, we switch. And why won't you? But if you say, I'm not asking you to switch, I'm going to ask you to come work for me. But what what are you looking for if you were to yeah. do that? Wes, I'm going to go to you, and then we are going to rent. Go ahead. Right. Well, I, here's what I, I think, Andy. It, we're, we're actually doing a, a message at North Point here, a whole series on this um, soon. But we will we will spend, depending on the person, somewhere between 90 and 130,000 hours doing what we label work. Okay, now, and so that's, that's about a third of your time on this planet. Is, is what you, what you'll ultimately spend. And Gallup poll recently done said that almost two thirds of the population said they hate or dislike oh. or feel under, unsatisfied with what they do with that third of their life, basically. Yeah. And, and so one, I would say what, what, whatever side of this you're on, if you're an advisor, are you creating something that people would answer that question in the affirmative instead of the negative? And, and if you, what would have to happen in order for that to occur? And, and, and then the other side is if you're, if you're in a role and you would answer the question that way, what would have to happen in your life for that to occur? Because here's the deal. Most people just tolerate it. They live there. And, and, and even again, just being clear for yourself, be wrong, but be clear on what do I think a great day at work would look like? Because listen, here's what it isn't. It isn't, I have all free time. Because studies prove this all the time. If you think just having for all free time is what makes you happy, that's what leads to some of the greatest amounts of depression you can possibly have. When the worst thing, worse than having to show up on Monday for work is not having a purpose big enough that Absolutely. you participate in to have yeah. to show up on Monday on work, to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember once uh, someone sharing a story that if you want complete and total freedom, you know, some people call that being homeless. <laughs> hey, I don't have a, I don't have a mortgage payment. I can go anywhere I want anytime, right? And and not to make light of their situation, but it's like, what does freedom look like? Well, right. people bring me, I get three meals a day and I have a place to sleep. And you're in jail. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, but it, yeah. it's so, and we laugh and we kind of go, oh, that's, that's extreme. Is it really? You know? And so if people want to be part of something bigger. And I hope that that's what people will take away is if you're having a hard time recruiting people or hiring people, again, focus on what you can control. And you can create a story. You can create a, an atmosphere, an environment, a culture that people want to be a part of. And that's true of people you want to hire, recruit, and or your clients that you want to work with. So, gentlemen, as always, thank you for your time. Folks, I want to ask, and I've done this before, and I'm going to do it again. If you are listening to this right now, and I know you are because you're listening to this right now, on Spotify, if you go to Spotify, there'll be a place for you to rate this with a number of stars. That's how Spotify works. They don't let you type in words. You just give them a number of stars. Would you please rate us the appropriate number of stars that you like us? And if you don't, that's okay too. But if you're on Apple, if you go in there and write a review, that would be wonderful. It really, truly does help this show grow if you take just a minute to do that. So whatever app you're on, if you could leave us a review, we deeply appreciate it. Uh, we've talked the last few episodes about Transform University. You can go to westyounglive.com to see when the next uh, session is starting for that. Uh, and as always, thank you for listening. Wes and Justin, thank you for your time today as well. Thanks, Annie.